ABC Kinder Teach presents Anatoly and the Cat, written by Eve Titus, illustrated by Paul Galdone. In all France, there was no mouse more honored or respected than Anatoly. He was very proud of his job as cheese taster at the factory of Mijou Duval. Nobody knew that he was not a man, but a mouse, not even Mijou Duval, for he did his work after the others went home. Always his dear wife, Dosette, blew him a kiss as he left the mouse village and bicycled off to Paris on business. After their six charming children were sound asleep. One night he entered the cheese-tasting room with Gaston, his good friend and helper. Anatoly tasted some brie and made a face. Too salty. Give me a not-so-good sign, and I'll write it down. Just then they heard soft footsteps on the floor above. They began to shiver and shake and quiver and quake. It is a cat, cried Anatoly. Still, we must do our job. As long as he stays upstairs, we work. As soon as he starts downstairs, out the window we go. They did their best, but they were much too frightened. Gaston kept dropping signs on the floor, and Anatoly scribbled just anything that came into his head. Alas, I fear I have made some serious mistakes, he said, but... It's all the fault of that awful animal. To be a cat is to be a monster and a menace. Then they ran for the window. The cat was on the stairs. They climbed down in a big hurry and bicycled home at about a mile a minute. That night, millions of cats marched through Anatoly's dreams, shouting, down with Anatoly, down with Anatoly. At dawn, when the sky turned pale pink, he left his bed as miserable as a mouse could be. At breakfast, he could scarcely swallow his food. The children were upset to see him looking so sad. What is worrying our dearest papa? they asked anxiously but Anatoly felt they were still too young to learn about cats, and he hurried them off to school. Then he hung his head in the deepest despair. No, sat. There was a you-know-what at the factory. She turned pale. Quelle horreur. What will you do? It is with such pride that I earn my family's bread and cheese instead of stooping to take people's scraps. Must I change my honorable way of life because of this beast? But Doucette said, No cat has appeared there before. Perhaps this one came out of curiosity and will never return. Anatolia hugged her. You give me new hope. Ma petite. How would I manage without such a jewel of a wife? And he ate his breakfast, for now he had an appetite. At that very moment, the factory was in a hullabaloo. The cheese workers were quarreling like cats and dogs. Half of them shouted that they must do what the signs said. The other half screamed that the signs were full of mistakes. They sent for Mijou Duval, the president of the factory. He came at once with a large cat perched upon his shoulder. Regardez. They cried, pointing to the signs. Mijou Duval scratched his head, greatly puzzled. 
What strange signs! I trust Anatoly as I would trust myself. Has he not made our cheeses the finest in all France? Still, it does seem odd to wrap cheese in a banana peel, and who ever heard of using chopped cucumber seeds? Can it be that he has invented some brand new cheeses? Or has Anatoly been working too hard? I shall send him a memo inquiring as to his health. Meanwhile, men, do just what the signs order you to do. And he left the room, patting his cat and saying, You did not come home last night. Where were you? Mon ami. The cat purred and blinked his bright green eyes. When Anatoly tooted his horn for Gaston that night, his friend appeared at the window holding a little bell. I am a mouse of caution. I do not wish to live dangerously. You must work alone at the factory after this. Mouse-eating monsters are not for me. Then he tinkled the bell. Of course, if you can bell the cat... Make no jokes about such a serious matter. Au revoir. Squeezing under the factory door, Anatoly listened for cat sounds, but happily there were none. In the tasting room, he found a short memo from Monsieur Duval asking him whether he felt quite right and begging him to take a holiday if he needed one. He went to Monsieur Duval's office and typed a memo in reply from Anatoly to Henry Duval about cats. There are some who dislike dogs or goldfish or parakeets. Myself, I do not care for cats. Last night, one of these creatures was in your factory. I was so disturbed that my work was not as good as usual. If a cat again appears, I may be forced to give up my job, much as I enjoy working for you. This he left in the typewriter. Now we shall see what we shall see. The next night there was a second memo from Monsieur Duval in reply to the memo from Anatoly, from Henry Duval to Anatoly about my cat. Our family pet is a cat who accompanies me to work each day in my limousine, returning home with me at closing time. Now, I know where he was the other night. I have scolded him, and he has strict orders not to remain in the factory after dark. I hope that henceforth you will be able to work in peace. Your expert judgment in cheese has made my success possible. Merci beaucoup. At first, Anatoly rejoiced, My worries are at an end. This cat loves Monsieur Duval and will surely obey him. But then he asked himself, Is a cat to be trusted? And the answer was known. At home, he sat silent, staring at the slanting rain, remembering Gaston's joke and a tale known the world over. Long, long ago, many mice had met to decide what to do about a cat. Someone had the idea of putting a bell around its neck. This would warn them of its coming, and all were pleased until a wise old mouse said, But who will bell the cat? Not one mouse had dared to do it, then or ever. There must be a way, thought Anatoly, pacing up and down. For hours and hours his brain was busy with ideas, but they all seemed too dangerous until he suddenly remembered a big empty crate in the storeroom of the factory. And Anatoly smiled, for now he had the perfect plan. Before leaving, he has to set for her sash. She was worried. Has it anything to do with the cat? Be careful. Not all the G's in France could replace you. Anatoly kissed her goodbye, telling her nothing. He stopped off at Gaston's and asked 
for the bell. Gaston, guess the reason. Do not risk your life, I beg of you. But Anatoly began stringing the sash through the top of the bell. The brute will be there tonight. I feel it in my bones. On the way to work, Anatoly entered a pet shop. He took a box of catnip, leaving some camembert cheese in payment. Then he went to a hardware shop. There he took a door latch, leaving some Roquefort cheese in payment. He arrived at the factory. He typed a memo in Mijou Duval's office. He hurried to the storeroom where he tried the door of the crate. It swung to and fro easily, and he hammered the latch into place. Then he put the catnip in the crate at the far end. Voila! If a man may build a mouse trap, then a mouse may build a cat trap. He hid himself and waited. Soon his sharp ears heard sounds. Was it the cat, or was it the thumping of his own heart? It was the cat. Smelling the catnip, he bounded into the crate. Quick as a wink, Anatoly slammed the door, scurried up and latched the latch and scurried down. The angry cat tried and tried, but the door would not open. How dare you trap me, he raged. My name is Charlemagne, and I come from a long line of illustrious cats. My great, 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 great grandfather was the pet of the emperor, Charlemagne himself. Let me out. Anatoly spoke softly. My dear Charlemagne, what about the catnip? I'll gobble it up and then beware, you little nobody of a mouse. But when the catnip was gone, Charlemagne completely forgot about Anatoly. He grinned and began to do all sorts of silly things, chasing his tail, turning somersaults, trying to stand on his head, and prancing and dancing wildly around the crate. Anatoly waited patiently, not a bit surprised. He knew Catnip did this to cats. At last, Charlemagne grew tired and stretched out and slept. Now or never, thought Anatoly, a sleeping cat cannot pounce. The cat's loud snores were like the rumble of thunder, but the brave mouse did what had to be done, even tying a big bow when he saw the sash was too long. Then he taped the memo to the crate and went upstairs. To celebrate, he fixed himself a special treat, a triple-decker sandwich with six different kinds of cheese. From Anatoly to Henry Duval about your cat. I have belled your disobedient cat. Uh, thus, I can stop work at a minute's notice and go home without coming face to face with a beast I detest. Naturally, the more often the cat comes, the less time I can give to my duties as first vice president in charge of cheese tasting. As a businessman, you should understand why it is wise to watch your cat. Upon hearing the news, Gaston glad read it, read it from the very top. Upon hearing the news, Gaston gladly returned to work. Sometimes they were bothered by the tinkling of the bell, but Mijou Duval kept close watch on Charlemagne, and this happened only once in a while. When it did, the two friends dashed madly for the window and climbed down as fast as their legs would let them. One Friday night, Anatoly took his family to see the factory. Bicycling along the boulevard toward Paris, the children said, Papa, did you think we were too young to be told about cats? Our teacher taught us all about them. That was the night the wonderful letter was waiting. My dear Anatoly, because of last month's mistakes, the people of France all had stomach aches. They demanded that I go out of business, but I begged for another chance. Since then, your work has been so good that they have all taken the Duval cheeses back to their hearts. 
or should I say to their stomachs. And now, my dear Vice President, I have a surprise. On the night of the mistakes, one sign said, add chopped cucumber seeds. This cucumber cheese is so tasty that it has become the people's favorite. Congratulations. In your honor, I have named it Cheese Anatoly, your friend, Henry Duval. P.S. Belling the cat was an excellent idea. Doucette was so pleased that she wept for joy. Paul and Paulette, Claude and Claudette, and George's and Georgette all exclaimed proudly, Our papa is so clever that a cheese has been named after him. And Gaston declared, I said it before, and I say it once more. He is a mouse magnifique. Viva Anatole! So Anatole again became the most honored, respected mouse in all France, and he was also the bravest because for thousands of years the mice of the world had talked about belling the cat, but Anatole was the only one who did it. <laughs>